Ring-a-ding-ding, I'm Chris Wagner, culture critic of the Dallas Morning News. And I'm Robert Wolanski, digital managing editor for the Dallas Morning News. We are talking Sinatra this week, Robert, a four-hour helping of Frank Sinatra. Sinatra All or Nothing at All airing Sunday, Monday nights on HBO. Big heaping helping of the chairman of the board. Uh, lots of Sinatra. I think we may have slightly differing, differing opinions on this one, which is always kind of fun. It's about time. There may be punches thrown in this edition of, of Real Genius. This is Real Genius, by the way. Um, I was rather overwhelmed in a good way by the abundance of footage in this film, yes. um, including some that's never been seen before. Um, it's kind of built around this 1971 retirement concert, which was not in fact a retirement concert, but it was supposed to be. Right, this is a, the, time. the latest film this week by Alex Gibney, the same guy who directed Going Clear, the Scientology yes. documentary we discussed just days ago. Yes. Uh, or as I like to say, it's directed by the people who edit movies for Alex Gibney, given the fact that he seems to have a bit of a uh, Henry Ford model working these he days. He did take three years on, on this one, and I do think he is the man in charge. And, oh, no, and I don't gives, disagree. He gives credit where it's due. Oh, no, I love Alex Gibney, and I, I like him for I like the film a great deal. Um, but before we talk about the film, and I have a lot of thoughts on it, having seen Sinatra, written about Sinatra a great deal. In fact, uh, I wrote his obituary for the Newark Star Ledger when he died. Did you really? So uh, he's someone with whom I have a profound. I wrote an essay. It wasn't necessarily the obituary, based on his one of his final shows, which happened to be in Dallas at the Music Hall. But before we do that, let's take a look at Sinatra in his prime from the documentary All or Nothing at All, airing this week on this, HBO. And this is the uh, that 1971. Retirement contract, which right. was not, in fact, a retirement contract. Far from. Fly me to the moon. Let me play up there with those stars. Let me see what life is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song. Let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I. So I came to Sinatra pretty late in my musical listening life. My parents were definitely not Sinatra people. They were more Grateful Dead people, probably. But I have really come to love and respect the man's work, um, especially that sort of rebirth he experienced in the 50s and 60s, I think, when a lot of his, his greatest songs and records were made. And that sort of takes up the second half of this four-hour documentary. Um, you mentioned the Capital and Reprise years. Yes, precisely. Um, you mentioned off camera to me that you found this a little bit shallow and I, I want to want to hear more on why um, and I, I can kind of see where you're coming from. Well, let me let's well, no, let me, what you have to say. Look, the problem is when you love Sinatra the way I loved Sinatra. There was a period in my life when I think I listened to a Sinatra record, certainly the Capitol records, and the wee small hours and all those records probably once every couple of days. I, I believe that there were two great American singers, Frank Sinatra and Al Green. Everybody else is pretty good. What about Dylan? After that, just kidding. But it's funny you mentioned Dylan because in a lot of ways this reminds me very much of No Direction Home, the Martin Scorsese documentary about Bob Dylan, which was also four, about four hours. Right, it's about four hours. And I think this is really good if you've never, if you don't know anything about Sinatra, and even if you do, there's great. Uh, one thing I love about this is that there's no talking heads. This is all footage. I love that too. I think it's tremendous that that happens and you get a lot of the, say, Lauren Bacall audio. Clearly she's reading from right. her audio book at that point. The, the, the audio is drawn from a number of sources. Yeah, he does interviews. There are, the t there are talking heads. We don't see them though. There's right, there's voices. scholars, there's everybody Because he scholars. knows he's got but such great footage. Right. We don't need to look at these people talking yeah, so the Yeah, so I don't need to see Just Pete Hamill when I can see genius. I don't need to see Pete Hamill when I can see, you know, Ava Gardner. Correct. So Always a good trade-off. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's one of the great things about it. And I, look, I don't think it's, I just think it could have been 10 hours long. I mean, certainly at some point you have to draw the line. 
Sinatra is such a complex and fascinating character, whether you're discussing his, his involvement in civil rights or whether you're just talking about the fact that the man started his own record label, Reprise Records, his, after his, his, his mafia capital. connections, his Kennedy his mafia connections. connections. The Kennedy stuff feels very abbreviated. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff in here that feels like it's sort of glossed over in the rush to get to the finish line. But I do love the using of the 71 concert, which uses these 11 songs to ostensibly tell the story of his life. The problem was that 71 retirement didn't last too terribly long. Right. So using that as a framing device is nice, but at the same time, it's not quite the period at the end of that, that remarkable sentence that was Frank Sinatra's life and career. I just, and again, I'm not complaining. It's, it's a lot of good stuff. It's I could just use, personally, a lot more of that stuff because mm -hmm. I just, I know for a guy who's been working on this for three years that there has to be a six hour or a 10 hour or a 100 hour version of it somewhere. That's the one I would have liked to have seen because a lot of stuff feels glossed over. It's pretty impressive just to have a four hour, I mean HBO is making a pretty nice commitment here with the two nights, but I know what you mean. There's no, one of the things that I felt about this is there's no real overriding thesis of you know some, some subtext saying who or what um, Frank, Frank Sinatra meant to the filmmaker, and it's not really that kind of film. I do think that both the fan and the relative novice will just find this compulsively watchable. Oh yeah. As I did. I just, you know, especially that second half. Um, I just think it's a really well put together film. I think all of Gibney's films are. Um, it's not intensely provocative. There's not a lot of new ground to plow, although there is some footage that's never been seen as we commented on previously. Um, I just think it's a really fun watch. You know, it, it, that's what it is. It's a fun watch at a life well lived. It's, uh, it's, it's entertaining, it's, it's, it's the best of, you get the best of the story, you get the best of the songs, you get the best of the films. But you know, there's so many more interesting things in there. I think there's a really great story to be done on the, the post-retirement career. You know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the way it ends with the uh, New York, New York stuff. And I'm not either. I thought it, I didn't, and I'm, you said it feels kind of rushed yeah. to the oh my finish God, the line. Just feels at the very end, I was like, wait, so what, what just happened? Why is Derek That's, Jeter in here all of a it's sudden? It's over now. Did he die? I heard he died in 1998. Why are we... Yeah, there's well, nothing about... The, <laughs> look, when I saw Sinatra at the very end of his life doing these concerts when his son was doing, when Frank Sinatra Jr., who, in, who interestingly enough in the documentary, you know, it's either dad when he's talking right. about the man or Sinatra when right. he's talking about the boss. Cause and Frank, he explains this. Right, because Junior was his band leader. Right. And I saw him lead the band at the music hall uh, in 94, 95. Junior also had a great cameo on the Sopranos once. Yeah, Junior's great. Junior's a fascinating character. I've interviewed Junior a couple of times. I find him just as fascinating in some weird, remarkable way. But the interesting thing about all this to me was when Sinatra, toward the end of his life, when he was relying on the teleprompters, when he was the last man standing. You know, he, he would sit up there on stage and he would talk about, he would do a Julie Stein song and he would talk about, you know, Julie Stein who has gone over the mountain. He had these wonderful euphemisms for his friends who had died, for these songwriters who had written all of these amazing works for him. And I thought that was as touching and profound as a lot of what's in the film. And I would have liked to have seen, if, if we're going to go to the end, and in the, in the way the film tries to get to the end. But if we're really going to go there, it feels like there's a really wonderful documentary to be made about that as well. So it feels cursory in one regard, and it feels very complete in the other, because you do have these unseen footage, you do have these unheard memoirs, and you do have this tremendous you know, outtakes of Sinatra's interviews. I love, it's not often you get to hear Sinatra use the F word, uh, and it's just so, it just hits you like that, and it's just great, and it's wonderful, and it's funny, and it's powerful. But there's a, a really touching and wonderful story to be told about Sinatra in Twilight um, that the film sort of gets at because it's the retirement concert, but we know, of course, that a couple of years later, he came back with the old Blue Eyes is back, the main event. And he had 37 more years. And 37 more years, and it was, um, or 30 more years. And it was, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an odd, I mean, it, like I said, it, if you're a completist, it's not enough. If you're a novice, it's probably too much. Um, and if you're just somebody who loves to hear the greatest American singer perform the greatest songs from the great American songbook, well, then it's the perfect film. Yeah, it's 27 years. I'm horrible at math. Yeah. I'm sorry. Always, always been my Achilles heel. Um, I mean, I used to, well, look, I saw him cry in concert. 
To me, that, that's the most visceral concert memory I will ever have. I've seen thousands of shows. To sit in the front row at Fair Park Music Hall and watch Frank Sinatra talk about his friends and to watch tears fall from his eyes while, I mean, it, it was the most cinematic moment I've ever had at a concert. The spotlight is on him and he's illuminated from the side and if you're five rows back, you couldn't see it. But just sitting right in the front row, I mean, tears began to drip down his face and, and splash onto the stage. And to me, that's the memory in a weird way that I carry with me. So to hear him in clear voice here is just wonderful and it reminds me of all the things I loved about Sinatra. You know, I, hell, I, we snuck into the mansion that night of his show and sat next to him at dinner and I just watched him for two hours watched nurse eat. a Jack Daniels what while do you sitting like, next to kid? Zeppo's wife. And it was just, and we... You're going to keep staring at me? He walked, yeah, he walked past me and we're like, Mr. Sinatra, that was phenomenal. <laughs> and look, Thanks, to me, kid. he's everything. I mean, I, I, I truly think that he is the greatest American singer who has ever lived. So something like this for me, of course, I'm going to love it, but I'm also going to want more. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be impossible to Absolutely, I'm to impossible entirely anyway. I'm just impossible. There you go. Uh, that is Sinatra All or Nothing at All. It airs Sunday and Monday nights on HBO. You should watch it a thousand long. times. Never boring, let's say that. It is not, it's it not. Is absolutely it's never boring. It's compulsively watching. So please watch, it, watch um, it and come back and watch us again next week.